Okay, hello once again. Um, in uh, this video, uh, we're going to go over uh, user-defined data types, uh, Chapter 7 from our Malik uh, textbook. Um, uh, actually, Chapter 7 is a little bit of a, of, of a bit of a collection of a few random things. So, uh, the only user-defined data type it talks about is numerator types. We'll talk about that, and then we'll talk briefly about namespaces and string types. Interesting, but this should be a relatively uh, a shorter video here this time. Um, so as usual, um, I have, uh, I will post this example code that I'm going to be using. Um, so, um, so uh, yeah, uh, enumerated types are useful to represent a finite set of discrete values, okay? So, uh, and, and we can do this ourselves. So what I mean by a finite uh, set of discrete values, for example, if you add something where you need to keep track of the day of the week, you might uh, create an enumerated type, you know, for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on. You can use uh, a set of, uh, I'm using, in this case, I'm using um, global name constants of, of type integer. So I just arbitrarily assign an integer value to each of my constants in the enumerated type, right? So that, that's what we mean by enumerated type. You do use these all the time in programming. Um, I can't use a string. That would have been fine. Okay, so 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 we can do something like that, um, and then uh, here's an example of a function that, that's useful for these kinds of enumerated types. So if I need to output the the value of this, you know, behind the scenes I'm using an integer, so I might want to convert that to a more human readable string. Okay, so you might have a little utility function like convert day of, of the week to string, where you give it one of these global constants, so one of the values zero through six. Um, and you return back the appropriate string, okay? So that's what we'll do in, in the program. So you might do things like this. So you might declare variables day of the week, assign a value, and then use that little utility function to um, um, uh, the, uh, convert to a string and display that somewhere on, on your screen, all right? So um, let me see if that can let's build this here and go ahead and run that. So we'll see the output of these two statements, okay? Um, so, as usual, I have a breakpoint down there. Um, so you see this first statement, you know, and, and it comes out works well. It works fine. The day of the week is Monday. Okay. So, um, um, so one of the, the drawbacks is that um, is that there's no check on um, you know uh, making certain that we don't put an invalid value into this. So the, the function is, is, is only expecting an integer. So if I assign a value of 7, if, if you go and look at what the utility function does, uh, we use a, a standard switch statement to do this. So uh, what happened, So it, I don't have like a, um, a, a default case here, so none of these cases get um, um, selected if I pass in a value that's not 0 through 6. Okay, and at that point, in that case, the, uh, the, the default value that I had of unknown gets returned from this function. So you can see that on the second example, day of the week is unknown. The other thing, to me, the, the, the actual real problem with this is, is that this doesn't give you a good intention of what this code is supposed to be doing, okay? So, I mean, I'm not passing in an integer. I'm passing in a particular type of value. So one of the, the best things the numerated types do is they make your code more readable. They, they, they uh, show the, in, the intention of what you what your code is supposed to do, right? Make it readable to a human being, okay? So let's, let's convert that over to enumerate an, an enumerated type instead of using these named global constants here. So um, I'm going to comment that region in. So there's a lot of, there's just a little hint here for Visual Studio users. There's a lot of useful things on the uh, edit advanced things, including comment and, and, and uncommenting and selection. So control K C and control K U to comment and uncomment. So if I, if I want to select that, control uh, K C to comment, and then what I want to do is use this enumerated type here. So control K U um, uncomment. So, so this this is the syntax of how I define a numerated type. Behind the scenes, um, um, C plus plus actually assigns integer values. So, so it's, it's really representing these as integer values zero, starting at zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, same as what I did before. But now we've got this uh, my own defined uh, data type now. So, so the day of the week is now a data type, like an integer or a float or a string. Okay. So um, 
Um, so we, we need to uh, fix my code here. So let me go to main and fix it. So first of all, so we're not using integers anymore. We're using our newly defined uh, data type, day of week. Okay. So 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 you see, that, I mean, that makes it more readable. I mean, this is not an integer. It's something that only holds a day of the week, uh, Sunday through uh, Saturday, right? Um, And let me go to the function then. So, you know, so I, I want this function. Um, so it's a day of week data type. Um, so, but yeah, I want it to explicitly say we only accept a day of week coming in uh, as input to this function. And everything else should work the same because I use the same um, constants here. So, by convention, we always use uppercase, all uppercase for uh, global constants like this. Like these are these are actually in the global namespace on the Monday Tuesday. So, um, and and another thing by convention, user defined types like classes or like this enumerate type. I like the the textbook doesn't do this, but I like these to start with an initial capital letter. Okay, so functions should start with a lowercase letter, and variables should start with a lowercase letter. But uh, user defined type like classes, structures, enumerated types should start with an initial uppercase letter to, to, to show what these are. Okay, so um, let's see. I probably did that. So I think I got everything. Let, let's try that out. See if it compiles. Um, I mean, I see it, but it won't compile right here. So, so that is my second point um, is, you know, so so it's um, since we know that the, the compiler now knows the day of the week is supposed to be one of these types, not just a regular integer. So it knows when you're trying to um, assign an illegal value to it. Okay, so we we can't do this anymore, right? Uh, and and likewise, um, I don't think I didn't try this, but I don't think I can even do something like this. Uh, I think the compiler will detect that as well, so I can't even, you know, send uh, an illegal value uh, as as the parameter, so a constant uh, seven uh, as my parameter to the function either. Um, same error. So it's detecting that it needs a day of the week data type here, not an integer. Okay, so I just can't do that anymore. I just cannot assign or represent a value that's not a valid day of the week anymore uh, using this variable. So that's the basics of the day of the week. Let's see, that, I think that should compile. Um, if I get rid of that one, yeah, and uh, we'll run it. So it's still running the same. So we still get this day of the week is Monday. Okay. So um, you know, notice because um, in my first output statement, I'm um, outputting the, the the return value from convert day of the week to string. Um, and you know, if I didn't show this, if I showed this function too fast or didn't say it, the the return type from convert day of the week to string function is a string. And then when you send that to your uh, the, the C out I O stream, you get uh, the the human read the human readable version of the day of the week Monday. Okay. All right. So one other quick thing for enumerated types, uh, it's, it's often useful uh, in lots of places to actually iterate over I should have, uh, to, to actually iterate over the um, oops control K control U I'm not there. To, to actually iterate over these uh, this is um, um, showing um, unfortunately iterating over enumerated types is, is a little bit messier so this is this is showing I mean, I, I will agree with you. I mean, C++ is not, uh, it's, it's got a lot of warts on it, right? So, and, and this is one of them. The numerator type, you can't, like, add and subtract values or increment it directly. I don't know why they didn't add that to the language. So what you do is you kind of, uh, just implicitly, you can add one. So it converts the day, whatever the value of the day of the week is, to its integer representation and adds one to it. But you can't. Um, automatically do that and assign it back in, so you have to do a static cast on this. But but they can do it like this. So the textbook shows. So here's here's iterating over that, and I don't know how those got changed to lowercase here. So uh, uh, so another style thing. So you should be using camel case uh, for variable names and uh, for function names and class names. Convert a week to string. So every word starts with a capital, except for the very first word for variables and function names. Um, 
Um, okay, there we go. Uh, let's see, that builds. Build. Oh, yeah. Stop debugging. Build it. And... Succeeded and run. So these, this, these outputs of iterating through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So you can see um, the, the other thing I had on this little loop, um, I was outputting both, you know, I just sent the day of the week directly to it. So when you do that, when you send one of these uh, day of the week uh, enumerated data types to the I.O. stream, it actually just displays the, um, the, the integer value that was assigned to each one of those, okay? So that's why you often need little helper functions like this when you use an enumerated type. So the, the second thing I do is then I use the helper function to convert to a string so I get the more human readable Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. So this is the basics of the, of, of the enumerated um, type. Um, you know, so congratulations, you've um, um, created your your very first data type. You didn't do that before in programming too. So, uh, I mean, part of this class is we're learning to create data types, but, but you know, we're going to uh, get to creating our own more complex ones, lists and, and queues and things like that. But um, um, some of the same things kind of apply here. So. Um, all right. So as I mentioned, uh, the, the, this textbook also talked a little bit about namespaces. You know, I mean, it doesn't really fit with uh, enumerated types all that much, except uh, on the idea that uh, namespaces are useful to people who are designing new data types, more complex data types. So often what you want to do, if, if you're defining a new data type or a new library, is you want to define also a namespace and put all, all the, the things in the library inside that new namespace. So namespaces are just a way of, of keeping global uh, library, different libraries from, from conflicting uh, at, at the global level. You know, so if I have two different libraries that want to define a function made, named ABS for absolute value, um, they, they used to conflict in, in C and, and you'd have to, either the library owners would have to make the name different or, or append their own uh, kind of name to the beginning of all their functions. So the namespace is a way to work around that, okay? So um, the, if you've ever, you know, seen the using namespace STD that I usually stick at the front, uh, at the top of my class, that's an example of, of, of the, the, the standard C++ li C++ library namespace is called STD, right? So the IO stream and string and lots of other things are defined in the, in the standard global namespace. If you didn't have that username using namespace STD, um, like if you wanted to use IO stream, you'd have to put STD colon colon um, all over the place for everything that's in the standard global C++ namespace, right? So the using namespace STD just um, saves uh, typing. It's basically saying uh, anything that's in the, the global namespace, I can refer to it without having to explicitly say I, I want to go to the, the, the STDD namespace. The, the chapter gives some examples of how you can find your own namespace. Later on, when we start creating our own abstract data types, like uh, linked lists and things, we might want to also use that this uh, defining namespace to put those in. Um, and then finally, also quickly, um, there's a little bit of, of extra in Chapter 7 about uh, strings. So string is not really uh, a fundamental data type in the C++ language. It's really an, an actually a, a new high-level um, object or, or class um, in, in the C++ language. So you, you, uh, hopefully you did use these in, in your Programming 2 class at, at some point. So you can create strings, uh, variables. Uh, in order to use strings, you do have to include uh, the string library at the, uh, somewhere in your file includes string. Um, so you can create a string and, and you know if you want to define a, a constant you have to put it in double quotes like you always had to do for a string and define that in a string. So um, and you can send those to IO streams so you know if I, if I create string Derek and Harder and I send those to, to C out you'll get um, hello my name is Derek Harder. Okay. Um, the um, um, string data type supports uh, lots of things you can do with them. So it has some operators are overloaded. So the plus operator is overloaded. Uh, if you don't, if you didn't haven't come across the idea of operator overloading our classes, uh, we are kind of uh, we will be talking about this in chapter ten or reviewing it. Um, so, but this is the same idea as operator overloading. 
Okay, so, so the plus operator is overloaded to do string concatenation for string. So if I create a string S and I concatenate a bunch of constant strings and the variable first name and last name, and then output S, we'll see uh, the second name, the second line. Uh, hello, my name is Derek John Harder. Right? Um, you can treat strings as arrays, and again, we haven't really we haven't reviewed arrays. I hope you ha did see them in programming two at least. Uh, but at, in actuality, the open and close brace bracket is overloaded in order to do um, array indexing into the string data type. So if I wanted to, for example, assign a different character to index 0 of s, I could do that and then output s again and then we'll get uh, jello. My name is Derek John Hunter. Okay. Um, and then also there's a lot of member functions uh, that are defined for this, these string objects, these string data types. So you should look at the table 7 dash one of our uh, Malik textbook to see um, not all of them but uh, some of the, the most useful ones. They can do things like find uh, a substring, the position of a substring. Um, they do things like insert. So here I insert these characters at position uh, five. So just before, uh, at position where Derek occurs in the string S. So, so the, this string will go before Derek and then we'll output this so we'll get uh, uh, this line here. Um, uh, my name is Banana Nana Bo Derek. Um, and um, substring, so you can get a sub. So this one says starting at index zero, uh, get the, the, the first 17 characters from zero to index 16 of S. And that, so it just outputs the substring. So the first set 70 characters of, of S is, is hello, my name is space. And then we can we output uh, the rest of this here, and, th and that's the last line here. Oh, Jello, Jello, my name is space. So. Um, all right. So like I said, uh, chap this chapter is a relatively short one, but, but those are the main things I wanted to talk about. Um, hopefully, if you never saw or kind of understood what the use of enumerate type is, that helps a little bit. You know, so enumerate type is it's an important concept. You're actually adding a new data type to the C++ language, and that's powerful. And that's really kind of one of the main things that we're going to be doing in this class, is thinking about adding new abstract data types to the language. Um, Alright, so that's it for this video, um, and we'll um, see you in the next video.